Hi everyone. I've been sitting here this morning considering cancelling this live as well as the earlier one this week that I was supposed to do. And I've been wondering why and I've been sitting here and a question popped in my head and it was what would I say if I wasn't looking for approval? Or what would I say if I wasn't looking, if there weren't any consequences? And I think I would just say how I'm feeling because uh, I do this a lot of my lives. I know I, I talk about the positive in the negative and I probably will do in this video too. But I also am aware that you guys watching, you're human. <clears throat> you may be feeling great today. You may not be feeling great today. You may be feeling sad, you may be feeling scared, you may be grieving, you may be just frightened of something in your life. And there's a lot of people out there that are, <coughs> excuse me, very positive, which is great, but um, not many people are sharing their really difficult stuff, their feelings, because we're given this perception that we're supposed to be not perfect, but publicly we're supposed to have the appearance of having everything all together you know we're not supposed to have a feeling of chaos or we're supposed to express things that really support and empower people and I think sometimes that we need to be human to do that we need to share that we are going through stuff and that if we can manage what happens then so can you so this past week I have had four nights where I've been going to bed and I have had panic attacks every night. Now, as some of you know, I'm recovering from, you know, really intense anxiety from childhood. And I wasn't really, well, I didn't really think I'd get panic attacks again, but I don't seem to get them during the day. I seem to get them at night. It's, and it's not even to do with any conscious thoughts I'm having. It seems to be I'm having them when I'm not thinking of anything. It's when I'm really tired and I'm about to fall asleep and I'm so relaxed. It's in that place where you feel so cosy and you're about to drift off. And I'll be drifting off to sleep and I'll suddenly be woken up with a... <gasps> can't breathe, feel like I'm having a heart attack, feel like I'm going to die. And it really freaks me out. This is my human self is so freaked out by it. It's total feeling of being out of control. And this past week, I've had a few things happen that have really signposted me in the direction that I need to learn to embrace a lack of control again in my life. Um, one simple thing which really upset me weirdly uh, I've been growing a sunflower in my garden and only I, I sprinkled about 20 seeds in my garden and only one sunflower grew and it was a really giant sunflower and it was uh, probably over six feet tall and it was getting to the top over the fence and it was just about to flower and I was so excited to see this lovely sunflower flower. Now I have some many animals visit my garden especially squirrels and I love my squirrels that visit. But this week, one of the squirrels had a bit of a fight with another squirrel and got really annoyed that he couldn't get to the nuts. So he started nibbling everything. And he went over to my sunflower. And I thought, he's just doing nothing. He's just looking at the sunflower. He's having a good sniff. And I thought nothing of it. Now, about an hour later, I went into my garden. And this squirrel had nibbled off the entire head of the sunflower that had been growing for probably maybe eight weeks nearly. So it's a, a reaction that I had. I was just in complete, I really got sad about that and I got really upset that this sunflower was completely ruined. And I thought, why am I so upset? It's only a flower. You know, it might grow back, it'll probably grow back or it might not. And then I realised it's because I felt I was in control in some way. And you can't control nature. And you can't control life either. It's something that all you can do really is be who you are. 
and allow life to happen and then deal with it when you can. So I woke up this morning feeling very sad and very despairing again and I thought the black dog has visited me again. I feel a sense of depression. Um, and the reason I cancelled my live on Tuesday was because I got some news which kind of really frightened me. Uh, my mother's ha got some health condition at the moment that she's getting tested for. And it really triggered me. It triggered me to when my father died when I was, I think, 26. And it was such a shock to me. And really, I grieved for about 10 years over my father. And it reminded me this week of mortality and death and life and how we can't control the ups and downs of life. We can't make things how we want them. You know, we can't make our parents live forever. We can't stop, you know, animals ruining plants. We can't do any of this. And it's been really hard for me. I've been really struggling with letting go of control and I feel very in a way I'm trying to control myself on this video right now I'm trying to control myself and stop myself from crying but I just want to show you that being human having feelings being scared being sad happens to the best of us and you know, we, can, we can't be up all of the time. We can't be full of an excitement. Life can't always be joyful. Because if it was, life would be so bland. It would be so plain. I think I, I posted recently on a, a poster on my page that I was looking at the sky last week and I looked at these beautiful clouds and they had so many colours and shadows on them and I thought well if there were no shadows on those clouds they would look so flat the world would be completely flat so while I'm really feeling this painful emotional today I'm aware that it's necessary to allow it to be I could floss over it I could pretend it's not there and I could sit here with a smile on my face and be really happy and positive and hyper and give you this rah 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 cheerleader kind of approach to public speaking but I'm not going to do that because I just feel sad today and hi Sly thank you for watching as many of you saw last Monday my last video was very full of anger and I'm learning to just express whatever needs to be expressed and not worry about the consequences and sometimes it's easier said than done. Right now I feel like just switching the camera off. I'm not breathing very well so I'm going to take a deep breath. And I invite you to as well, if you're feeling stressed or anxious at all. I wish I had some wisdom to share today. But I guess I don't need to. I guess sometimes I just need to speak and learn to be myself in front of other people. Because I hope that by doing so it gives you permission to feel, to be whatever is happening for you right now. And to know that other people are going through exactly what you may be going through. There are millions of people who may be experiencing depression right now, who are feeling rejected by life, who may be feeling despair, who may be feeling hopeless and powerless. And there may be lots of people in the world, there are millions of people in the world right now who are suffering from anxiety social anxiety, maybe they're scared to leave their homes, maybe little things really affect them 
And other people might think, well, how can they be so scared or anxious? There's nothing much happening in their lives. But we can't know what another person is feeling. We can't know what they've gone through. We can't know what experiences they've had. We can't know what history they've led. We don't know what conditioning they've received in life. So what may work for us may not work for another person. I've been told many times that I should do different things to overcome anxiety and move through depression. And the only thing that I've discovered works the most, and it's not a working, is accepting that there is anxiety, that there is a depressive mood and feelings are taking place and to allow them and embrace them and to recognise that I'm not these feelings. I'm so much more than these feelings and you are too. When I was feeling really anxious earlier in the week, I was sitting on my sofa and I was really, really scared and there was so much fear coming up, the adrenaline was going. And I just literally asked myself, what is it that I'm thinking right now? Why am I so scared? And then I realised I was fearing a future. I was in the future and I was trying to control something that hadn't happened and probably isn't going to happen. And in that moment, by acknowledging that that fear isn't here, that thing that I think is going to happen isn't going to happen, it's not here right now right now is okay and even when I'm feeling low and depressed or sad and tearful it's all part of life it's all part of life God whatever you want to call it creation life and love hold us in this space that we're in God goddess the universe doesn't judge that joy is better than sadness or sorrow. It doesn't judge that love even is better than fear. It simply holds us and allows us because we are experiencing life. And this is what life is. It is to experience it all. And it's when we fight against what we're feeling like these sad, these tears that I want to cry right now. When we resist them, we are fighting against our inner child. We're fighting against the part of us that may be hurting. And we're hurting ourselves by resisting what is taking place. Hi, Angela. I'm sorry you're feeling down. It's not easy, I know. Angela's a friend of mine and uh, I know that so many of us suffer from mental health issues and it's, I know it's becoming more known in the world. But I guess there is still a sig stigma. I think we are still programmed to feel we've got to put on a happy face or place a, a sticker over our sadness, you know, with a smile on, but it's just not true. And I think if more of us recognise that feeling whatever we feel is the universe, is life experiencing and to not resist it, to accept this is what's happening today. It's not going to be forever. It's a changing experience. Who we really are doesn't change. The truth of who we are, love, light, doesn't ever change. But the feelings do, the emotions do, the thoughts do. And like I've said in previous videos, the sky is a great um, measure of our feelings. Whenever we look at the sky in its blue sky, it's beautiful. But that sky is who we really are. And then these clouds come over like sadness, grief, depression, sorrow, fear. And we watch them. But that sky is still there. And it will clear again. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But the sun is still behind those clouds. So just remember this today. If you're feeling like I am. That it's okay how you feel. 
it doesn't mean you're wrong, it doesn't mean you're bad, it doesn't mean you're failing at life. And it certainly doesn't mean that you have to feel happy or be anything other than what you're feeling. So just allow these feelings to be and nurture that inner child by allowing those feelings to be and accepting. It's okay. Sadness is here. And these eyes are made to cry as well as smile. And if we never cried, our eyes would be extremely dry. Let's think about it that way. We'd probably have really sore eyes if we never watered. And somebody said to me many years ago that sometimes we cry because there is so much love inside of us that the body cannot contain the love. So it pours out through the eyes. And that love is God, Goddess, Universe, Christ, whatever you follow in life, that is that energy within you that is pouring through you and that's why you cry. So you can release and, and free those stuck feelings or energies that need your comfort and support. So thank you everybody for watching. I think I'll switch off now and I'll have a bit of a cry because it's okay. And I hope that you can be okay with how you're feeling today. And know that everything's okay and this too will pass. Thanks everyone. I'll hopefully speak to you next Tuesday at 10am. Bye everyone.